Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2, where today, John Coleman and I are going to be speaking with the brain whisperer, Stephen Campbell. Hi, Steve. Hello. How are you? Good to see hey, you. Hey, good. Uh, Steve, you know, both Art and I have uh, had long careers. We're pretty successful guys in our own rights and came together and formed this partnership to do Celebrating Act Two, which I think is uh, very successful so far. And it got me thinking about the idea of success. You know, you kind of set your goals and you get you want to get there. That's what success yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But how does the brain contribute to success? I mean, I'm looking back at, at 40 years in television mm -hmm. and in some cases, I have no idea how I got yeah. to do what I got to do, but okay. it all worked out. Oh, come, part, well, of it, sure. oh, me, part of it, John, is that you're adorable. You're, that's okay. part of it. Okay, but there must be other reasons. There must be. It really comes down to one principle, I think. I'm 75 years old, and as I look back at my life, there are some places where I was really successful, other places where I was not, et cetera. And as I look back on my life, I count myself as being successful now because, and if your people want to write this down, this is the most important part. I have come to really like myself. You can be a millionaire and yet hate yourself. You can do all these other things and if you don't like yourself, you're going to be miserable. So let me share with you five different principles that will help you not only like yourself, but accept who you are. Number one, the standard model for success is money, wealth, all these other things, okay? And that's great, and, and I'm, not, I'm not downgrading any of that stuff, but some of the most successful people that I have met had very little money, but it didn't matter to them because what they did is they liked themselves. They saw the mistakes, they saw the successes, and they said, even though I've done all of these things, I've come to like myself. So their success is not predicated on things that can change. You can lose your money in a second. You can lose your house in a second. That's happened here in America. You can lose your life in a second through COVID. So the bottom line is it's not predicated on any of those things. Basically, it comes down to liking yourself. Number two, Avoid comparing yourself to others, because here's what we do. We compare ourselves to others that are much more successful, quote unquote, than we are. That's a lose-lose. It doesn't have to be that way. So no comparisons. It took me a long time, like decades, to learn that I don't compare myself to anyone except who I am today and how I'm growing. Number three, celebrate my victories, both big and small. There's a very, very famous study that came out of Stanford University back in 1975 called The Effort Effect. What they discovered is that most of us pass over our successes too quickly, too lightly for them to ever become a part of who we are. So when someone compliments us, we often say, oh, not really, that's embarrassing, that's egotistical, I don't really think so, no, no, no. Well, one of the principles that I teach is that our brain believes what we tell it. So when we say, no, 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 the brain believes that and it says, yeah, you're right, you're right. And those compliments fall to the floor, which is not only sad, but what a waste. So here's a new way of thinking when you do something well. When people compliment you, you look at them and you smile and say, you know what? That makes me feel really nice. Thank you for taking the time to tell me that. And then when you get by yourself, 
You wallow in your success like a pig in slop. Wallow in it. And I have a question. Why do we have to wait for someone else to tell us how amazing we are? As we study the human body and the human brain and all the things that the body can do, we really are amazing individuals. Number three. I'm sorry, that's number four. Number five, ready? I'm sorry, that's number four. Number number three is take a holistic view of yourself. Not what you can do, but who you are. Not what you've done, but what you can become. That's the most exciting part. And then finally, Accept your failures. As you read the biographies of most amazing people, it's amazing how many times they failed. Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Edison, Albert Einstein, all these amazing people failed so many times. And yet they've succeeded. I don't know how many times Walt Disney went into bankruptcy to create Disneyland and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. But he had to, and look what happened. Why? Because he wanted to share his vision of the world to the rest of the world. Failure is an intimate, incredibly important part of success. So what do you do when you fail? Well, number one, you use three wonderful words. You know what the words are? The next time. The next time I'll do it this way. The next time I'll do it that way. And when you say the next time, you're saying three things. Number one, you're saying there is a next time. How many next times do we get, guys? As many as we want. Isn't that exciting? Number two, when you say the next time, you're saying, I'll never give up, ever. And number three, when you say the next time, you're saying, I'm still learning, I'm still growing, I'm still changing, which means I'm still making mistakes. But just because I fail doesn't mean I'm a failure. Thomas Edison was asked how he felt to fail 999 times looking for the filament of a light bulb. He said, I did not fail 999 times. I simply found 999 ways that didn't work. I remember going to work one morning when I was teaching, waiting for a light to change. A kid came up to me in a very, very fancy car. He looked at my little Toyota. The light changed. He went peeling out from me, roaring up the freeway, passing everyone. As I watched this, I had this epiphany. How many cars are ready in front of him? Millions. How many cars are behind him? Millions. So maybe it's not a matter of how fast you get there. Maybe it's a matter of you're going in the right direction. But people, even when you go in the right direction, sometimes you just run out of gas. Sometimes you get a flat tire. Sometimes we even lose our way. But you know what? You can buy some more gas. You can replace the tire. You can get a map. And what's so wonderful? The brain just says, oh, okay. Is it true? Don't care. All I care about is what you tell me. You say it, I believe it. You lock onto it, you know what I will do? I'll do everything I can to make it true in your life. Wow. Yeah. All of that, Steve, that all rings so true. Mm -hmm. It really does. When you say it, it, since you've analyzed it, figured it out, you (laughs) put it into words. At each step, I was saying, boy, that's true. That's really true. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Uh, have so you said so many for... times, Steve, that there are every second, every time you blink, is the beginning of a new 
day, of a new week, life. hour, That's right. opportunity. That's right. That's right. All you need to do is take them. Yeah. Yeah. Great advice. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.